teammates can provide him with a crown of thorns or a jewel-studded garland. Terry Bradshaw achieved royal status, while Archie Manning had a cross to bear, the New Orleans Saints. In 1971, Manning joined this lowly franchise, but his arm promised that in the NFL at least, the South would rise again. Manning blossomed into one of the game's best, and he was named NFC Player of the Year for 1978. Yet, the Saints had never known a winning season, and Manning was seen as the perpetual savior of a team that could not save itself. Nor could the Saints save Manning from the onslaught of enemy defenses. Here was one Johnny Reb who heard the bugle sound retreat all too often. This scrambling fox wore out many a hound. But Archie Manning's misfortune is that his own team has yet to keep pace with his considerable talent. Terry Bradshaw inherited a team that couldn't keep pace with anyone. Golly, could nothing be greater happen to Terry Bradshaw than to go up to Pittsburgh and make Pittsburgh a winner. Team from 1 and 13, change it around, make it 13 and 1 or 14. You know, make them a winner. The Steelers won five games in 1970 as the raw rookie displayed both a man's arm and a child's exuberance. For an eager rookie, one good game can make the future look bright. In the first two games, every time we started dropping back, everything was real fuzzy, yeah. you know? And now it's just all sort of, you know, don't even worry about it. Yeah. That's why I've always wanted to feel. I feel if I could ever get like that, everything would be it's all right. It's going to get better. Yeah, I mean, I was dropping back, and I could see the defense and see them going into the weak zone and everything. I could see the whole picture. I knew exactly where to go. Yeah. And if that continues, you know, that's going to be great. But greatness was interrupted by moments when Bradshaw looked like he was auditioning for Hee Haw. In the early years, Miss Cues earned him ridicule from those who saw him as a Yahoo, a yokel, a little Abner in cleats. And Brad self-doubt that threatened to send his career crashing to the ground. Though he bounced back, he never shook the tag of Bayou Bumpkin. Indeed, he often seemed disoriented in Steelers' black and gold, more suited to tattered knee pants and suspenders. But talented teammates helped Bradshaw find his bearings. The Pittsburgh Steelers were destined to become the greatest team of the seven. And Bradshaw helped them fulfill their destiny. Bradshaw benefited from a stable of swift and graceful receivers, who in turn benefited from his awesome arching rockets. In 1974, Bradshaw emerged as a confident, consistent, and yes, intelligent leader and passer. Bradshaw not only found himself, he and the Steelers found each other. Together, they won a record Super Bowl. During the 70s, there was no football team on earth more consistently powerful 
than Pittsburgh's Men of Steel. In that grandest of football spectacles, the Super Bowl, Terry Bradshaw rose to the magnitude of the event four times. In Super Bowl 13, Dallas, he threw a record four touchdown passes. Super Bowl XIV brought Bradshaw MVP honors for the second straight year. With this triumph, Bradshaw had won twice as many goals as any quarterback in NFL annals. It had taken a while for Terry Bradshaw to attain maturity, but once he and the Pittsburgh Steelers matured together, they carved themselves a special place in pro football history.